Tom and Bob Lee Tractate Beta. Page 30b, top of the page, starting with the Mishnah, the new Mishnah, Ein Notzlin Eitzim Min Hasukkah, etc. One may not take wood from a sukkah on any festival, not only on the festival of Sukkot, because this is considered dismantling, but one may, one may take from near it. That's the Mishnah. One of the shortest missions have to be Ain Notan Aids in Asuka Ella Min Asamukla. That's the whole mission. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine words. That's gotta be one of the shortest missions out there. If not the shortest. Anyway, the Talmud says. The Gemara poses a question with regard to the Mishnah. In what way is this case different? Why did the Mishnah teach that from the Sukkah itself one may not remove wood? It is because one thereby dismantles a tent which is a prohibited labor. But if so, if one takes wood from near it, too, doesn't he thereby dismantle a tent? Why then <clears throat> does the Mishnah permit him to do so? Not necessarily. If wood nearby, it doesn't have to be a tent. I don't know what they're asking here. But anyway. Amr Yud, Amr Shmuel. Amr Yud said that Shmuel said, what is the meaning of near it? It means near the wall hall. Wood placed near the walls may be removed because it is not part of the sukkah itself. The walls themselves may not be moved. I mean, if it was me, I would say pshita. You know, the Gemara always says pshita. This is obvious. It's like the Gemara chooses when to say pshita. But I would say that this thing right here is obvious. Totally obvious. But apparently the Gemara didn't feel that this was obvious. They had to explain it. But it's just... Anyway, let's continue. Rabbi Nashia said, even if you say that it is referring to a case where the wood is not near the walls, but is part of the roof of the sukkah itself, when that bride was taught, it was with regard to bundles of reeds that are not considered part of the roof of the sukkah, as they have not been untied. Therefore, one may remove them. Tanya, Rabbi Chia Bar Yosef, comment to Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Chia Bar Yosef taught the fallen brighter before Rabbi Yochanan. One may not take wood from the sukkah itself, but only from the nearby wood. Rabbi Shimon permits one to take wood from the sukkah as well. And all agree, even Rabbi Shimon, that with regard to the sukkah that was built for the festival of Sukkot during the festival, it is prohibited to remove wood from it, but if all, but if at the outset one stipulated a condition with regard to it allowing him to use it for other purposes, it is all according to his stipulation. Is he saying? The Gemara questions this right. And does Rabbi Shimon permit one to take wood from the sukkah itself? But isn't one dismantling a tent, which is prohibited labor? The Gemara answer is that Rabbi Nachman Bar Yitzchak said, here we are dealing with a sukkah that has already collapsed. Therefore, the only potential concern is muktza, not dismantling. And Rabbi Shimon conforms to his standard line of reasoning. Rabbi Shimon the Tamei, he conforms to his standard line of reasoning, as he is not of the opinion that there is a prohibition of muktzah, as is taught in the Brisa. If wick, if a wick in oil was lit before Shabbat, and it went out on Shabbat, the remainder of the oil in the lamp or a bowl is prohibited for use, as it is muktzah. I remember this one. Rabbi Shimon permits one to use a. There, I think it was Muktzah Machmas Mias is the idea. 
Mukta Mahmas Mius. But he says, no, if you're light, no. I said this part of the Yishlach in uh, 2022. At Rabbi Hennig's table, yes. It was by Dina, because there was a Midrash that says that, uh, there's a Midrash that says that Shimon married Dina after the event, after she was, uh, yeah. From Hashem, that story. So then, um, whether he married her, whether it just means he took her in, whatever, but it says he married her. And I was saying that Rabbi Shimon is like Shimon of the brothers of the... It's like Shimon. Shimon didn't find Dina disgusting because she was... Um, uh-huh. But Rabbi Shimon also doesn't find Mutsa Machas Mias. He says, you know, it's not disgusting. No, it's not disgusting. It's a, le- it's a light. Every year it's a light. Every, if your life, your neshama is, is a nair, and, 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 and the oil's gone out, and something happened, or oil's out, whatever... So some people say, no, don't touch it. It's most of Mias. No, no. Every year is a light. It's not disgusting, even if it went out. So I was saying a Shimon and Shimon. Xerashah between two Shimon. So that was it. Fighter. The Gemara rejects this claim. Is it comparable there in the case of when a lamb a person sits and anticipates when his lamb will be extinguished? Is it clear to him that it will be extinguished? And he can safely assume that a certain amount of oil remain and land in the bowl. Here, however, it can be said that a person sits and anticipates when his sukkah will fall. He cannot know ahead of time that his sukkah will collapse. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchuk said, Here we are dealing with a sukkah that is not, is not sturdy. As from yesterday, the festival eve, one already had his mind on it. He thought it might collapse, and therefore he did not remove the possibility of using his wood from his mind. Uh, the above Bryce estates all agree with regard to the sukkah that was built for the festival of Sukkot, that during the festival is prohibited to remove wood from it. But if one stipulated a condition with regard to it, it is all according to his condition. Gemara asks, and is a condition effective with regard to it? Is a condition effective with regard to it? But didn't Rav Sheshit say in the name of Akiva, from where is it derived that the wood of a sukkah is prohibited to be used for any other use all seven days of the festival? It is, as it is stated, the festival of Sukkot to the Lord, seven days, Leviticus 23-34. And just talking to different brides, an explanation of this that Rabbi Yehuda ben Betera says, From where is it derived that just as the name of heaven takes effect upon the festival peace offering, <clears throat> so too does the name of heaven take effect upon the sukkah? The verse states, The festival of Sukkot to the Lord, seven days. Leviticus 23.34 From which it is learned, just as the festival offering is consecrated to the Lord, so to the sukkah is consecrated to the Lord. Since the wood of the sukkah is compared to consecrated objects, how may one stipulate a condition with regard to it? Rav Menashius and the brother said, In the latter clause where the stipulation is mentioned, we have arrived at the case of a regular sukkah, a hut used throughout the year, not specifically for the festival, with regard to such a sukkah, one may stipulate, stipulate to use the wood as he wishes. But as for a sukkah of mitzvah used for the festival, a condition is not effective with regard to it. Okay. And is a condition not effective for a sukkah of mitzvah, but isn't it taught in the Tosefta in the case of a sukkah that one, ro- one roofed in accordance with its halakha and decorated it with embroidered clothes and with patterned sheets and hung on it nuts, almonds, peaches, pomegranates, and vines of grapes and glass containers filled with wine, oil, and flour and wreaths of ears of corn for decoration. It is prohibited to derive benefit from any of these until the conclusion of the last festival day. But if one stipulated a condition with regard to them whereby he allows himself to use them, 
It's all according to the condition. This shows that conditions are effective. They are indeed, and in fact, effective, even with regard to the sort of the mitzvah. The Gemara answer is based on the opinion of Rabbi and Lavi. Both say that this is referring to a case where one says, I am not removing myself from them throughout twilight. In other words, he announces from the outset that he will not set them aside as sukkah decorations, but rather he will use them for other purposes as well. In that case, no sanctity devolves upon them at all. And he may therefore use them throughout the festival. However, as for the actual wood of the sukkah, sanctity devolves upon it through the very construction of the sukkah. And it has therefore been set aside from use for the entire seven day. The Gemara asks, The Gemara asks, And in what way is it different from that which is stated with regard to a different halacha, in the case of one who separated seven esrogim for each of the seven festival days, one for each day, Rav said he fulfills his obligation through each and every one of them, when he recites the blessing over the Lulav and Esra, and if he so desires, he may eat it immediately after the blessing. And Rav Ashi said he, he fulfills his obligation through each one, and he may eat it in the following day, as it retains its sanctity for the duration of that entire day. In any case, all agree that the sanctity of each Esra does not extend to the following day. If so, why does the sanctity of the Sukkah extend throughout all seven days. The Gemara answers, there is a different difference between an Esrog and a Sukkah. There, with regard to an Esrog, the nights are divided from the days. As the mitzvah of Esrog applies only during the day and not at night. This means that each and every day is its own mitzvah. And therefore an item that is sanctified for one day is not necessarily sanctified for the following day. However, here, with regard to sukkah, where the nights are not divided from days, as the midst of sukkah applies at night as well, all seven days are considered as one long day. Throughout the festival, there is no moment during which the sanctity of sukkah leaves the wood. It leaves only at the conclusion of the festival.